Come on, I feel an excitement in this room this morning. Yes. Hallelujah. Come on, let's get ready to give Jesus praise this morning. Let's go.
don't have to be afraid. You said when we go through the waters, you would be with us. That when we go through the fire, they will not consume us. You are with us, God, and we will fear nothing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You're our light and our salvation. Whom shall we fear? Nothing. 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 Thank you, Jesus.
our voices right now come on can we just praise the king in this place right now God you are worthy God you are holy God you are the most high I was standing over there in the corner where I was worshiping before I came up here and I just felt the Holy Spirit so strong I, I was in tears and I was just standing there and he said Jaden do you want to know something And I'm just like what, what is it God and he, he wanted me to share this with everybody he said I want a relationship with you more than you want a relationship with me. When we're singing that song, it says there's no place that I'd rather be than here when you're singing over me. And we're thinking we're singing that to him, but in reality, God is saying there's nowhere I would rather be than right here in this place with my people, with my children, with you singing over me. There's nowhere that God would rather be than in your presence. Just because he's almighty doesn't mean that he has a higher agenda. You know what, I wanna go create a universe today. No, he would rather be here with his people. He would rather be here in this place with you. So God, we just thank you. God, we worship you on this day. We lift up the name of Jesus, the name that is above all names, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. There is no place we would rather be than in the presence of the King right now in this place and everyone all across the house of God all at once said, amen, amen and amen, come on. Say what's up to somebody next to you. Make sure that they're six feet away. I realize we got a lot of people in here right now, but it's all good, Brad. It is so good to see you. Am I here right now? Am I really here right now? Am I really standing here right now? Man, God is good. God is in this place all the time. Somebody finished it for me. Man, it feels so refreshing to be in this place. It still feels so refreshing to be in this place. <laughs> oh, man. Man, it is good to see everybody. What I want to do real fast, I want to give a shout out to everybody. I'm looking right at the camera right now. I want to give a shout out to everybody that's watching online. I just wanted to say that we love you. We miss you. We are praying for you. 
Um, I realize there's people at home who maybe are sick, have people living in the home who, who maybe are sick, so I just want to let you know, we as a staff, we as a church body, we support you, we love you, we can't wait for this crazy season to be over so we can be with you again. So we just want to let you know we're here for you and we miss you so much. So, um, and what I wanted to do, I don't think Pastor James is in here right now, uh, but I wanted to do something. I wanted to give honor to our pastor. Um, pastor James, he has been pastoring and shepherding in a season that no one has ever seen before. No one has ever seen this. There's not a handbook. I, I went on YouTube and I tried to find a video on how to, how to pastor in a pandemic. Uh, nothing came up. Uh, this is a first time thing. So Pastor James, I want you guys to know this. I've been in every staff meeting. I've been on every Zoom call. I've been on every single phone call. Every decision that he has made has not just been, a, oh, well, I'm just going to do this because I feel like it. No, he has been in prayer. He has been seeking the Lord. He has been spending a lot of time saying, God, I want to make sure before I do this, God, I'm hearing from you so I can tell you beyond a shadow of a doubt. I believe that our pastor will stand before the Lord and we gives an account on 2020. God will say, well done, faithful servant. So let's give honor to our pastor. Thank you so much, Pastor James, man. Yeah, come on. Let's just honor our pastor right now. Come on. I don't even know where he is. Oh, man. Uh, thank you, guys. Thank you so much. He'll watch that later if he wasn't in here, so <laughs> he'll be excited to see that. But, man, I'm, I'm excited to bring the word. Are you guys ready to hear the word? I believe that I have a word. Uh, so right before all of this started, uh, me and my wife, we were actually at a restaurant, and, and check this out. We were inside the restaurant, and yeah, restaurants have these really cool things. There's like this ventilation system in the roof, and it blows cold air into the restaurant. It's called air conditioning. It's an amazing thing. So we were sitting inside the restaurant, and the very next hour, everything was told to go back online. Everything was told you can't do indoor gatherings anymore. Literally, I was sitting just in the restaurant, and while I'm on that note, can we please, as a community, some support our restaurants right now? Yeah. I mean, people are outside. Like, these, these workers, these waitresses and waiters, they are in the heat all day, in the smoke all day. Anybody that's having to put their business outside, nail salons, whatever it may be, can we, as a community, support them right now? Like, if you can, if you can afford to go out and eat out every single night, can you do that? Like, I'm serious. I, I know, like, that's the opposite of what we tell people. Like, you need to stop eating out so much, right? Like, if you're spending too much money. If you are able to, please get out and support these businesses because they are doing everything they can to try to keep their families alive. They're in the heat all day. If you can sit down, come on. If you can sit down at a restaurant for an hour, they're working hours and hours and hours. So we need to make sure that we as a community come together and we support our local businesses. Amen? Amen. So, uh, and give good tips. If you are able to, that's something I was always taught. If you are able to give good tips, leave good tips. If we can do that, let's support each other. Let's get each other, let's get each other through this season. Amen? So I actually had the honor when we went back online to take a COVID test. I was exposed to somebody that had it. So I wanted to get a test because I didn't want to be reckless and, and go around getting people sick if I had it. So I went and took a test. And so I scheduled my appointment for super early in the morning. I scheduled it for like 7.30 a.m. And so I'm getting to the parking lot. I'm like, it's, there's going to be nobody there at 7.30. There's like 300 cars. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this makes the in and out like the drive through line look small. You know, it's the Chick-fil-A. It looks like, like super small. You know what I mean? Super small line. Somebody got that. Thank you. But so I'm getting there. I'm like, oh my gosh. So I have an hour and a half to think about this test. And I'm thinking about the, you know, the Q-tips, the four foot Q-tip that they use. I'm like, God, I'm a lot of bones. I've had stitches everywhere. I've been to the emergency room so many times. I'm like, I don't want to get poked in my brain with a Q-tip right now. Like this, that does not sound like a good time to me. So I'm, I'm not kidding you. I was nervous. Just being straight up, I was, I was scared. I was legit scared to take the test. I'm usually not afraid to do things like that. So I pull up and the nurse, uh, she's like, okay, we gotta take a swab of the back of your throat. And I'm like, that wasn't in the pamphlet. Like you, I, was, I was freaking out for the last hour and a half about getting my brain poked with the Q-tip and you gotta swab the back of my throat. And I'm like, okay, that shouldn't be too bad. She says, well, open up. And I'm like, okay. So she sticks the thing in my mouth and it hits the back of my throat. And I'm like, Hur! I'm like, ma'am. If you do that again, I'm going to puke all over you. And so she's like, I have to. I'm like, is there any way around this? She's like, no. I'm like, oh, okay. All right, let's go. Okay. I'm like, let's man up, dude. Come on. Be a man. And so I'm like, ah. And she does it again. I'm like, ah. I'm like, oh, my. So what I want to do, do we have a video? I want to show the video of my daughter. My daughter's going to reenact what I did 
My daughter has the same gag reflex that I do. Let's do it again. So, <laughs> I was wondering, I was wondering where my gag reflex came from, or where her gag re reflex came from. It, it came from me, so. <laughs> Anyways, I made it through the test, and I'm like, oh man, thank God we, we, we got through that. It, was, it made the nose thing not even that bad. The nose thing was super easy. But while I was sitting in that parking lot, this is where I'm gonna get into my message, I'm gonna get real. I was sitting there and I'm like, this feels kind of apocalyptic right now. Can I be honest with you guys? Like I'm sitting there, there's these tents, I'm not even allowed, I'm in a hospital parking lot, I can't even go into the hospital. Hundreds of cars, people wearing this PPE, they have face shields and masks and goggles and gloves, all of these things running around. It looked like Monsters, Inc. when they have a 2319, you know, and somebody comes out with a sock, all the dudes in the yellow suits, and I'm like, this is crazy. I'm like, this feels some end times kind of stuff. And everything going on in our world right now kind of feels that way. And so many people have been reaching out to me. I've been saved for nine years. And the nine years that I've been saved, in this year alone, I've had more people reach out to me and ask me, what do I need to do to get right with God? Is this the end? So many people have been reaching out to me. They're freaking out. Is this it? Like everything's on fire right now. There's riots. There's all these things going on. There's so much lawlessness. And so people are wondering. I've talked to so many generations, both young and old, and they can all say this. I've never seen anything like this before, still, to this day. So it poses a question, what days are we living in? So what I want to do right now is I want to preach a message that I didn't want to preach. Can I be 100% real with you? I wrestled with God all week. I told God, I don't want to preach this. Straight up. In my, I said, God, I don't want to talk about this. I would rather talk about how when you leave service, there's going to be two rainbows and a Teletubby going to give you a warm hug. That's what I would rather preach about. And so I wrestled with it literally until last night. And I'm going to just share. This is kind of cool. I was on YouTube. I watch a lot of sermons on YouTube. It's just something that I enjoy doing. And so I, I saw that it shows me what I am. Like usually what you watch, it recommends videos. So an old David Wilkerson clip came up, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to watch, you know, David Wilkerson to kind of get in the zone, you know what I mean, before I preach, so I can just, you know, I want to be like, you know, somebody like that. So I, I watched it, and it's a 10-minute clip, and everything he said was everything I had written in my notes. And I was like, yeah, you clap, but I was like, oh, God, confirmation. And so I clicked on another, there's another church that I watch, and I scrolled through, there's hundreds of videos, and I'm like, okay, that was probably just, you know how you try to avoid doing something? You're like, that was a coincidence, God. That wasn't a confirmation. That's literally what I said. I'm like, that was just a coincidence. Like, everything he said is everything I'm going to say. I watched another video from another church, not even affiliated with David Wilker at all, and I scrolled through hundreds of videos, and I'm like, ah, oh, that one looks cool. I just, you know, they have a picture, and you kind of like the picture, so you click on it. I clicked on it. And the pastor is giving an altar call. It just like my YouTube kind of messed up and it went to that part of the altar call. And he was preaching every single thing I had in my notes. I was like, God, okay. <laughs> I guess I'll preach on that this Sunday. So I'm going to preach the word to you guys because God is making me preach it. He won't let me get away from it. So this morning, I'm going to jump into that. What I want to do right now is I want to read 1 Corinthians. We're going to go ahead and pull that up, that scripture, if you guys have it for me. And this is what I want to do. I'm going to try to explain this as if you've never heard the gospel before. You've never read the word before. Check this out. It says, so you see, just as death came into the world through a man, now the resurrection from the dead has begun through another. Just as everyone dies because we all belong to Adam, everyone who belongs to Christ will be given new life. Come on, somebody. But there is an order to this resurrection. Christ was raised first of the harvest, and all who belong to Christ, catch this will be raised, hold on a sec, will be raised when what? Comes back. I don't know if anybody knew this, but Jesus is coming back. I need you to know this. You maybe have never heard this before in your life, but he's not coming back just in your mind. Metaphor, whatever it may be. Jesus is literally coming back to the earth. I need you to catch this right now. Jesus is coming back in human form again, but I need you to catch this. The first time he came as a baby, and a generation witnessed it. It was prophesied about. Every single prophecy took place and every single prophecy came true and a generation literally with their own eyes witnessed the King of Kings be born as a baby and live for 33 years. But that's not it. 
He said, I'm coming back. I'm coming back for my church. I'm coming back for my people. He said, I'm coming back in person. The biggest question we must ask, though, is this. Which generation gets to see it? I'm going to say that again. A generation saw him come the first time, but what generation is going to see him come the second time? I'm so happy you asked that question. We're going to go ahead and read Matthew 24. We're going to check this out. This is Jesus speaking to his disciples. And it says, as Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples, they came to him privately, and they said, tell us, just like many people have asked me, they said, when will this happen? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Talking about when he returns to the earth. And Jesus said this. Now Jesus is speaking to you because we have not seen this happen yet. So Jesus says this. Watch out that no one deceives you. We're going to come back to that. For many will come in my name claiming I'm the Messiah and they'll deceive many. You will hear of wars and of rumors of wars. But see to it that you're not alarmed. Let me pause church. If you are in Christ, you don't got to freak out. If you are in Christ, you don't need to be worried. When you see things happening, don't worry about it. We've read the end of the book. Come on, we win. Don't worry about it. He said, nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are literally, he said, these are just the beginning of the birth pains. Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death. We don't like reading that, but that's in the Bible. And you will be hated by all nations because of me. And then he says this, at that time, many will turn away from the faith and they'll betray and they'll hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people because of the increase of wickedness. The love of most will grow cold, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. Come on, let's belong to a church that's gonna stand firm to the end. I don't care what the world is telling you. I'm going to stand firm on what God has told me. I don't care what it looks like out there. I'm going to stand true to what God has convicted and told me that's going to happen. We need to stand firm in what we know is true. Come on, somebody. Man. I'm not even to my message yet. Yeah, I am kind of. Check this out. Jesus says this in verse 4. This is going to be my first point. He says, watch out. The very first thing that Jesus tells us to do, he said, watch out that no one deceives you. So James, his, last, or his first point in his message last week was this. We need to preach the word of God. My first point is this. We need to know the word of God. I'm going to say it again. We as a church, we need to know the word of God. We need to know what the word says. Not what I'm telling you it says. Not what Pastor James is telling you it says. What does the word say? We need to study it. We need to read it for ourselves. Come on. We need to know the word of God in our heart. There's a pastor... He went on Facebook and he posted this uh, scripture. And he was a very well-known pastor and hun flood in. People were shouting, they're like, amen. They're like, so good. And they're like, that's a great word. Preach it, pastor. And so he let the post go for a few hours. And then he went back online again and he posted something in regards to his last post. And he said, I just want to let everybody know my last post was actually the words of the devil. Read your Bible. Whoo. You see, we got to know what the word says for ourselves. I tell my youth, I could get up here and say anything I want to you and you'd believe me. Just because I said it, I could say second opinions 24-7. This is what it says. No, we need to preach the word. But not just that, we need to know what the word says. I want you guys to catch this. You can write this down. Do you want to know the number one way to determine what a lie is? The number one way, full proof, it works every single time, is to know the truth. The number one way to determine what a lie is, is to first know the truth. We need to know the truth. We need to know what the word says. If you don't know what the truth is, then you'll fall for any lie. I'm going to say it again. If we don't know what the truth is, then we'll fall for any lie. Can I be real with you? We need to be in our word more than we watch the news. We need to be in our word more than we're on Facebook. Come on, we need to be in the Word more than we watch conspiracy theory videos of what's going on with the election. Come on. We need to read the Word of God and know what it's saying because if we know what it's saying, then we'll know what's happening. Come on. I'm not going to let the world feed me. I'm going to let the Word feed me. I'm going to let God tell me what's happening. I don't care what's going on. I see what's going on here. Come on. We need to know the Word of God. That's a good point, Jaden. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> Moving on. Thank you, guys. My second, my second is this. Verse 10, 
Jesus says this, at that time, many will turn away from the faith and they'll betray and they'll hate each other. Paul writes to the church of Thessalonica, he writes a letter. The church of Thessalonica was freaking out about the end times. They were freaking out about the rapture. They were freaking out. Did we miss it? Did Jesus already come back? They were, they were tripping out. And so Paul writes to them. He's like, hey, guys, like, stop freaking out. He said, these things got to happen first. So Paul actually writes this as well after what Jesus said in 2 Thessalonians. He said, don't be fooled by what they say. He's talking about false prophets and people that are saying, I- I've heard from God. He said, for that day will not come until there is a great rebellion against God and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the one who brings destruction. Both of these passages talk about a falling away. They talk about the church, people who have been in church for years, leaving the faith, pastors walking away from the church, people saying, you know what, I can't do this anymore. God's not here right now. I don't feel the presence of God. I'm gonna fall away. It says great numbers of Christians are gonna fall from the faith. Can I get real with you right now? I'm gonna get down because I wanna get that real with you. I need you guys to say something. I'm not gonna fall away. I'm not going to fall away. No matter how crazy it gets, no matter what happens, no matter what the world is doing, if you maybe haven't seen a prayer answered in a while, I need you to do this. I need you to stand firm and say, you know what? I'm not going to fall away. I'm not going to leave the church. I don't care what happens in the world. I'm standing right here, and I'm not going to miss out. Come on. We can't fall away. We can't fall from the church. It says this in 2 Timothy 4, 7. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, and I have kept the faith. There is nothing easy about being in a fight. I don't know anybody that's been in a fight and like, that was pretty easy. No. I don't know anybody that's ran a race and like, hey, it was easy. No. I've been, in, when I was an athlete, when I was training, I've been hung over the bleachers, puking my guts out because I was so tired, but I didn't want to quit. And the reason I didn't want to quit is because the taste of victory was so much better than the taste of defeat. We need to stay true to what the Word of God says. We need to keep the faith. We need to run the race and say, God, I did everything I knew to do. No matter what the world was saying, no matter what it looked like, I'm standing true to the faith. Come on, somebody. And I will not be moved. All right, moving into my last point. My last point, we're going to read Matthew 24 again. We're going to read the second half of it now. So we're going to skip down a few verses. It says this in 36 Uh, through 42, I believe we're going to read through. It says, but about that day, this is Jesus speaking. He's speaking to the disciples still. It says, but about that day or the hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven nor the son. Jesus don't even know, but only the father. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the son of man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage up to the day that Noah entered the ark. We'll go to the next one. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be in a field. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding with a hand mill. One will be taken and the other left. Therefore, he says, whenever there's a therefore, you want to see what it's there for. He said, therefore, keep watch because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. Come on, church. He says, you don't know what day I'm coming back. We need to always be ready. We need to always be prepared. My third point is this. It's the title of my message. Are you building your boat? I'm going to say it again. Are you building your boat? I want you guys to catch this right now. Noah's boat was built before the rain came. It wasn't halfway finished, and then the raindrop hit the dirt. His boat was completed. There were no holes in it. It was ready to float. As soon as the rainfall hit, he was ready to go. He was prepared. Everything was built. Everything was ready. What is God saying? We need to always be ready. We need to always be in season. We need to always be prepared. We need to always have our head on it, knowing, God, this could be the day. God, I'm going to be ready. I'm going to be prepared. Now, I want you guys to check this out. You may be wondering, like, well, Jaden, how, how do I build my boat? Like, am I supposed to go to Lowe's after service? Like, can you send me some blueprints? I gotta go get some lumber. Like, what are, you, what are you talking about? What do you mean I need to build my boat? This is what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm gonna share this with you guys. There's a pastor I was listening to, a preacher, and he said this. He said, if you, if I were to stand here right now and tell you the Lord was coming back tonight, what would your afternoon look like after I said amen and you went home? Let me put that in a different perspective for you. Let me just kind of illustrate it this way. If Jesus came in through that door, 
and he walked and he stood right here. And he said, Life Song Church, I just want to let you know that tonight at 9 o'clock, I'm coming back for you. I'm coming back for my church. I'm coming back for my bride. I'm coming back for my people. 9 o'clock, make sure you're ready. And then he left. If you knew that, if you had that revelation, what would your afternoon look like? Come on, somebody. We'd probably leave. We'd get on the freeway, and that person would cut us off. And instead of being like, oh, you stupid moron, we'd probably be like, God, I just pray you bless that person. I just pray, God, that person that cut me off, I just pray that you're with them. And I pray at 9 o'clock that their whole family would be saved and they can come with me. God, I just thank you, Lord. I just praise you. Right? You'd go home, and you'd be walking, and you'd stub your toe on the coffee table, and you'd, be, you'd probably, instead of saying a word that you wouldn't say around Pastor James, you would come in, you'd stub your toe, and be like, oh, God, you know what? While I'm down here, I just want to worship you. God, I just want to praise you. You know what? I don't really need this toe. God, I got nine other toes. Babe, put some worship music on. Come on. God, I just, I just want to pray. God, bless the hands that made this coffee table. Lord, I just pray that they come with us tonight at 9 o'clock. Lord, I just love you. I just worship you. I just praise you. God, just, I pray... Am I wrong? If you knew the Lord was coming back tonight, come on, what would our afternoon look like? There'd probably be some phone calls we would make. I just need to call you. I just need to say I forgive you. I just want to ask if you could forgive me. I just want to say I'm sorry. I just wanted to call you right now and say, hey, I, I, God has a plan for your life. That family member, that friend, whoever may, I just want to let you know he's alive, he's real. Sharice, you can actually come up right now. And he wants a relationship with you. That's what building your boat looks like. And it's not out of fear. Hold on a sec. I don't live my life that way out of fear. I live my life that way out of love. I do what I do because I love him. And I want to be with him. And I don't want to miss out on anything that he has for me. Not out of fear. Not because I'm afraid. I'm building my boat every day. And I'm making sure. I'm checking it. God, is my boat good? I'm not going to lie, in this season, almost every single day, I've got before God and said, God, are we good? Is there anything in my life that I should be doing different? Is there anything in my life that I maybe don't even know about that I could fix? Every single day, I'm building my boat. I'm getting my boat ready because I am not going to miss out on the glory of the king when he returns because Jesus is going to come back through the clouds for his church. My last point is this. And this is going to be very blunt, and it's going to be very real, and it's going to be very raw. But it's this. Jesus is not coming back for people that are playing church. Jesus is coming back for the people that are his church. Come on, somebody. I want to be a part of that church, Lord. God, whatever I need, I want to be a part of your church. God, I want that relationship with you. I need to tell you, I'm going to repeat what I said in the beginning. God wants a relationship with you more than you have a relationship with him. That's how bad he wants you. Come on. That's, you can clap for that. He wants a relationship with you more than you want a relationship with him. I want to share something that occurred. Uh, I had a, a crazy encounter with the Lord within the last, I'd say it was three weeks ago now, maybe two weeks. And I'm not sharing this because I want you guys to be like, oh my gosh, wow, that's crazy. God does. I, I, I really, I'm sharing this because I want you to understand just maybe a, a little bit of the character of God. But this has only happened to me, I can maybe count on one hand how many times God has done this for me. When I was 19 years old, some of you maybe don't even know this, when I was 19 years old, I had a radical encounter on, on the highway, 10 o'clock at night, Highway 26 in Linden, California. I remember exactly what time it was, what song was on the radio, and, and the presence of God, Jesus literally sat there in my truck. And from that moment, I have not turned away since. And since that day, I've had maybe two or three encounters like that. This does not happen regularly. But I was sitting down in the living room just by myself, and I was, I was doing what I normally do at night. I was just watching a, preach, you know, a preacher, a message, just whatever. And the message ended, and, and I closed my phone. And I was just sitting there. Wasn't expecting anything, wasn't praying for anything. Just kind of hanging out, just doing my thing. I was getting ready to go to bed. It was almost midnight. And I felt the presence of God walk in like I've never felt it before. And he came in the room. I felt the wind of God. I felt him literally. He was in the room with me. <clears throat> and the first thing I did, I remembered that presence when I was sitting in my truck. It was the same presence. I felt God in church before. I felt him speak to me sometimes for people. 
but these encounters are complete. I'm literally standing in the presence of God fully. He's right there in the living room. And the first thing that I did was I just, I, I put my hands like this and I began to pray for everything that I, I'm like, God, help the people in our church. God, help these people that I'm talking to right now on the phone that just need to know. And I began to just pour out my heart everything that I could think of because he was in the room. Because he was in the room, I needed to get everything out. I'm like, God, while you're here, I need to tell you. I need to say, God, this is what, and he stopped me. And he said, Jaden, stop praying. I'm like, what? He said, just sit in my presence. That's all God wants. God just wants to sit in your presence. He just wants to sit with you. I don't share what I shared to scare you or to frighten you, but it's because we have a God that loves you so much. He doesn't want you to miss out on the glory of his kingdom and what he has for you. That's the love of God and what he has for his people. Come on. I want to ask if everybody in this place, if you would stand with me. I'm going to ask uh, the prayer team if you guys could come down to the front as well. I want to remind you again, there is nowhere God would rather be than right here with you. And I realize what I talked about today was pretty heavy. But I believe wholeheartedly, this is, this is me, I know for a fact I will have to stand before my creator one day and he's gonna ask me, he's gonna say, Jaden, did you preach based on what you knew? And I wanna be able to say, yes, God, I knew what you said in your word and, and I said everything to the best of my ability to the way I knew to preach it, God. I wanna be able to stand before him that day, but here's the thing, I want you to check this out. When Noah built his boat, his boat was able to save his family. He had knowledge of what was to come. I'm standing here right now not to intimidate or to frighten or to scare, but because I want to say, I don't want my family to miss out. I don't want anybody at the sound of my voice or watching online to miss out on what God has for them. So I'm telling you right now, Noah's boat was able to save his family. I'm telling you right now, build your boat. Get your boat ready because you don't want to miss out on what the king has. If you are in Christ, I'm going to say this. If you are in Christ, the worse it gets, the more excited you should get because you know that the king is coming back. Whatever goes on, it may sound crazy. It may sound weird, but the crazier my news gets, whatever, when there's new things popping up on my news every single day, I'm like, right on, Lord. If this stuff is true, if it really does get worse, right on. I get to see my king come through the clouds, and that means that everybody will know the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. I'm not worried. I'm not scared. I know who I am in Christ. But I want to say this. I want to give everybody in the room an opportunity, just as I have done every single day of the week, and I've said, God, are we cool? God, are we good? God, I, I, I want to build my boat. Lord, if I had the understanding that if you were to come back tonight, Lord, maybe I don't feel like I was ready for it. And there's no shame in that because God's given you an opportunity right now because he loves you that much. In your heart or your spirit, say, God, I just, God, there are some areas in my life that I know I would need to change, God, because I don't want to miss out on what you have for me. I'm not preaching this like it's gonna to happen tonight. I'm just preaching this because we need to always be ready. We need to always be in that attitude. We need to always be in that spirit. So what I wanna do is I wanna have everybody all over this place just go ahead and bow your heads and close your eyes. If that's you, I'm not gonna put you on the spot because I'm, I'm probably gonna include myself in this because if I'm being honest, things in my life I probably would need to change before tonight if he was coming back. Can I be real? So what I want to do is I want us to pray. I'm going to have you repeat after me if you want. And we're going to, let's do this. As a body, we're going to pray together. I'm not going to make anybody feel isolated. I'm not going to make anybody feel ashamed. Noah's boat was for his family. This boat is for this family in this place. So what I want to do, we're going to pray as a family. So Lord, repeat after me. Lord, we come to you. And I just ask you, if there's any areas in my life that need correction, would you correct them now? God, I give myself to you. God, I want to be with you. God, I want to be in your presence all the days of my life. And everybody in this place said, amen, amen and amen. This is, what, this is what I want to do right now. 
If you sincerely need that prayer one-on-one, that's what this prayer team is here for. I don't want you to feel like, you know what, I'm just going to, if you really feel the need for that prayer, please come and make your way down to the front. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close out in prayer right now in this moment. So Holy Spirit, I want to give this moment to you. And actually, are we able to worship, worship team? Are we able to worship for a little bit? Is that cool? Are you guys okay with worshiping? Is anybody like worshiping here? I don't know. If, yeah, okay, cool. So we're going to actually do this. I'm going to pray, and then we're going to worship. And if you feel the need to, you can come down to this altar and get prayer. But we're going to, everybody else, we're going to worship together. So Lord, right now, in this attitude, God, we're going to lift your name. We're going to lift the name of Jesus. God, you came as a baby, but this time when you come back, you're coming as a king. And Lord, I believe that the white horse is getting ready in the stable. I believe that the robe that says King of Kings and Lord of Lords is getting its final stitching on it and getting its final ironing done because God, I believe, God, we're gonna see the kingdom. God, I believe, Lord, God, that we're gonna be in your presence. And God, I don't know when that will be because Jesus, you don't even know that day. But God, it may be today. God, it may be 100 years from now, but either way, God, we are gonna live our lives as if we're always ready. God, everything that we do, we're going to worship you. We're going to praise you. We're going to lift the name of Jesus in this place. God, regardless of what happens in the world, whatever the world is telling us to do, God, we're going to listen to your voice. We're going to listen to the voice of truth. And so, God, right now as a family, God, we're going to finish that boat. We're going to get that boat ready. God, we're going to worship together. God, we realize that you want a relationship with us more than we want that relationship with you. So God, right now, we're just going to lift our hands because we're just saying, Lord, I want that right now. God, will you just spend time with me? God, I just want to spend time in your presence. Let's go, church. Let's worship together right now. Come on.